Hey, welcome back once again, all you Sec Plus preppers. These are the IT Dojo Security Plus questions of the day. I'm Colin Weaver. Every day you get two questions from me, helping you with your studies. Hope it's going well. Let's jump right in it. All right, question number one today coming at you. It says that it has been decided that you're going to control access to your, net, your Ethernet switch network using port security. Uh, which of the following items is going to be involved in implementing that particular control? Go ahead and click on pause. Give those a read. When you're ready, break it down. Let's do it. Okay, choice number one on the list, 802.1x with EAP is not the right answer. 802.1x is port-based access control. EAP is the Extensible Authentication Protocol. Those guys work together to form a superbly awesome one-two punch to provide you very cool authentication solutions like protected EAP and EAP TLS and other kinds of neat stuff in your network. Um, and none of those deal with port security in the way that this question is asking. So. Um, 802.1x and EAP are awesomeness. We're looking for an answer that's not quite as awesome. Next choice on the list is destination MAC address. Uh, that is not true. Uh, we are looking for port security, which is actually going to be source MAC address, which is the right answer. In this case, destination MAC address is not what we're looking for. Then the next choice on the list, uh, which is also not the correct choice, is radius attribute value pairs. Uh, AVPs or attribute value pairs are a very awesome way for radius to return back specific attributes and what their corresponding values are, but it has absolutely nothing to do uh, directly with port security um, being implemented on a switch. All right, how about IP access control lists? No, IP access control lists are awesome for controlling the flow of IP traffic, but they are not good for implementing port security on your device. Finally, we come to the correct answer, which is source MAC address. When you implement port security on an Ethernet switch, uh, you're going to go in and configure either a quantity of MAC addresses that are allowed to be on a particular port and or specific MAC addresses that are allowed to be on a port. And then the switch can enforce that by either shutting the port down or discarding uh, offending frames that have a MAC address that don't, that don't match your list. Uh, but it is exclusively based on the source MAC address to determine whether or not the traffic is going to be allowed to flow. Um, it's a very commonly deployed solution. Um, I encourage you to do look at, uh, look at some of the, uh, the links that are down below because it's not a particularly great solution. Um, even so, its prevalence does not mean it's a good thing, but uh, it's, it's fairly easily circumvented and there's a variety of techniques and ways that it can be done, but um, it's still out there, still widely used. And then the last choice on the list, which is also not one of the right answers, would be TACX Plus authorizations. Uh, Terminal Access Control or Access Control Server or TACX Plus. Um, is a very wonderful piece of software that's going to allow you to go in and do all kinds of cool things with authentication, authorization, and accounting. Um, it's just not something that dovetails in directly with um, uh, MAC address filtering and port security that you would go in and have uh, on a switched device. All right, here comes question number two today. A lot of words. Um, forensic investigators, actually, no, I'm going to show you a list in a second of uh, seven different places where um, either how information is stored or where information is stored um, on a computer system. And then I'm going to ask you the question, which is that computer forensics investigators are interested in collecting evidence uh, frequently by its order of volatility. And what I want you to do with these seven items is, is I want you to go in and order them from most volatile to least volatile uh, so that you know exactly what that order of volatility is. So take a moment, go ahead and take those seven items that are there, rearrange them, get them into the order of, of least to most or excuse me, most to least volatile, and then we'll break it down. All right, let's break it down. From the most to least volatile, the most volatile stuff on a computer system is going to be the caches and registers that are associated with uh, storage places either on the motherboard or on the, on the processor itself. That's the most volatile. The next most volatile information is going to be stuff that's stored in RAM. These are going to be things like your ARP table, your name resolution table, your routing table. Uh, any kind of table that's going to be dynamically created, like process tables and things like that, all that stuff is in RAM and all that stuff is rather volatile. So it's number two on the list. Next in terms of volatility are going to be temporary storage locations on your system, like a temp drive or a temp folder, like you might find in the temp directory in Linux. Uh, those things are temporary and, of course, are therefore volatile. So that's number three. Fourth on the list is your disk, be it a spinning hard disk or a solid state drive. Uh, that's next in the order of volatility. Number five on the list should have been remote logging and monitoring data that's relevant to whatever the issue is that you're having. So that's stuff that is off system that you can go and retrieve later on. And number six on the list is going to be your, your physical topology of your network and configurations and things of that nature. And then the very last thing in the order of volatility is archival media. These are going to be your backups and uh, you know, other long-term storage things that you have so that you can go back and recover your data. 
All right, two more questions down. Hope you dug them. Please like it if you did. And first question was on uh, port security and exactly what's going to be involved in that, which is source MAC addresses. And the second question was making sure that from a computer forensics perspective, you understand what the order of volatility is for information uh, as it relates to a forensic investigator. Um, that's it. See you tomorrow.